How much is it? Stay tuned and let's get into the ID Buzz configurator on the German Volkswagen van website to see how you're going to configure your new ID Buzz. Right, so before we get into that, just want to let you know that we are going to be doing a barbecue comparison. Uh, we've got a load of different barbecues uh, that we're going to just put to the test. It's going to be a right sausage fest. Let's see how we get on with that. Uh, we're doing that while we go to a new campsite for us called Etty's Field, and we're going to do a video on that too. So stay tuned for those over the next couple of weeks. I'm sure you'll find them useful and exciting. And uh, now we can crack on and have a look at this ID Buzz. So, uh, as you probably saw from the thumbnail of this video, uh, it's quite expensive. Um, you know, Sarah and I, when we had a look round one, um, we felt really privileged to be able to see one in the flesh and see it early from Volkswagen. Uh, came away from that, felt quite excited about it. We, we like EVs. I've had an EV for many years now of different kinds um, and felt actually like it could could really work for us potentially um, not necessarily instead of the cali but as a family car but i tell you what now we've got some look at the german prices and the german configurator i don't think it's going to be a goer i just can't see how we're going to be able to afford one uh, and that's that's the the true top and bottom of it we're going to have a, a quick run through the configurator uh, I'll do it on screen so you can see all the different options and kind of how it comes together in different colours and all those kind of things. But with a base starting price of €64,000, um, well, you'll see when I go through the configurator, that's just the base price. And uh, if you're used to driving something, uh, you know, a, a premium car or anything like that, you know, basic things like heated seats and kind of, you know, sat nav and all those kind of things that you might want, guess what? They're in the options list. So uh, yeah, we'll go through, we'll configure one and uh, you can see what you think. Have a play on the configurator yourself as well and, and you might uh, come up with a spec that you feel is worth it. But I tell you what, you're not going to be spending less, I don't think, than about 70, 75,000 euros. Um, obviously, whatever that translates to in, in time as it comes to the UK as well. Uh, it's an expensive, it's an expensive little beast. So let's uh, let's get into it. Let's configure one on the site and uh, let's see what it looks like. Right then, let's get into it. I've got my uh, my laptop here. I've uh, got a trusty mug of tea, uh, which we might need as we go through this. Uh, might need to be something a bit stronger than that by the time we get to the end. Uh, and uh, this is the German website. So uh, German Volkswagen van website, obviously it's talking about pre-ordering here. I don't speak German, so when we get a bit later into the configurator, when we're looking at all the options and things, I'll switch on the translate function uh, that we've got here, uh, which will help us out a little bit. So uh, let's go through and start configuring. So only one model that's able to be configured. Uh, it's the pro model so that's the 204 horsepower one uh, with the 77 kilowatt battery uh, so uh, there we are so that is the id buzz and obviously you can see this is a, a normal volkswagen configurator so you can start to see some of the interior pictures and you can um, there's a 360 thing that you can whiz around and everything else uh, the uh, couple of interesting points on this early slide here is the um, Gross vehicle weight three kilo, uh, three tons. Um, that's the uh, total permissible weight of the vehicle three tons. Uh, the if you look in the technical data uh, as you go through here, um, the uh, this is the empty weight with a driver two four seven one. So you've got just over five hundred kilos to play with in terms of payload. Which, when you think they're going to turn this into um, a camper in due course, by the time they've put a roof in it, uh, maybe a modular kitchen or a fitted kitchen of some kind, unless they're up in that three uh, that three ton overall, it's going to be quite a small payload by the time you've got all that stuff in. Um, so, um, so yeah, quite a uh, quite a challenge there, and obviously that's the weight of the batteries which are in it. So, so there we are. Um, the WLTP range that they're publishing on the website, 423 kilometres. Um, clearly it won't do that, I'm sure. Uh, we will see exactly what kind of range it does when uh, the EV bloggers and, and vloggers get their hands on it and all the magazines and everything. 
uh, that's not really our bag on this channel and uh, I'm sure uh, some real world figures will come out on that pretty soon. Uh, if you want a bit of a ready reckoner, this is exactly the same battery and motor as the um, ID3, uh, ID4, ID5, etc. Um, and the Skoda Enyaq. Um, so if you want a bit of a comparison, this obviously does a 18.9 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. If you have a look at the equivalent pro model of the ID3, um, so that would be a 204 horsepower, 77 kilowatt battery. Look to see what real world, or look to see what book that does from a, a efficiency perspective. See what people are saying in the real world. Look at that percentage difference between the two, and then apply it to this, and it will probably give a rough idea uh, of what it would do. Anyway, uh, so uh, starting price sixty four thousand five hundred euros. Um, this price at the bottom here, just ignore that for now because the, the way that it's it's initially set up on the. Uh, configurator when you first go in is with two-tone paint things so we'll we'll go through that so bizarrely the first thing um, that is on the site for you to have a configure of is the interior um, first time i've ever seen that usually it's external color first then it's interior but not on this website so it's basically interior colors um, the um the website doesn't seem to want to show me the uh, 3d rendering at the moment of the interior so Sorry about that, um, but you can see here that we've got uh, two-tone interiors which basically match the external colours. And I, what I'll do is I'm going to, it's obviously selected a kind of dark interior at the moment, but if I just go through, uh, I'll go through the wheels and then I'll show you the external colours and then I'll come back to the interior because you'll be able to see why there's different colours there. So 18-inch wheels, 19-inch wheels, 20, 21-inch wheels. Uh, the one that you saw in the video um, when we uh, did it, when we went and saw one in the flesh, obviously had 21-inch wheels. They're only going to show it with the biggest and best, aren't they? Um, if you want those, 952 euros on top, uh, but obviously you can go smaller if you wanted to. Uh, so here are the colour schemes then. So we've got a uh, straight white, um, which... Uh, I think could be cool, uh, probably needs a bit of uh, graphics or some kind of sign writing and things, feels like a bit of a blank canvas. Uh, then you've got the green two-tone, the orange two-tone, the yellow two-tone, and then what I think looks lovely actually, a um, uh, starlight blue metallic two-tone, and then you've obviously got solid green, solid orange, solid yellow, uh, silver, and then a... Um, a starlight blue metallic and then there is a pearl black as well so let us know in the comments below what you think to these different colors um, which would you pick out of any of these i'm i i really i like a yellow car i really like that i think that's going to be really common um so i would probably go for the blue actually i think the blue two-tone looks pretty cool um and if i go back now to um the interior you can see that they do a blue two-tone interior, um, which matches that exterior really nicely. And I don't know if it's gonna uh, manage to load the uh, interior. Right, there you go. So you can have a blue two-tone white and blue interior, which I think looks great. So uh, let's go with that. Uh, now then, this is where we get into the options list. So I'm gonna switch on, I'm gonna cheat and switch on the translation here um, because this does start to get quite tricky otherwise. So uh, they've got some recommendations. That's very kind, Volkswagen. Thank you very much. Uh, so we've got things like design package, which if I look in here, so that's where you get your matrix LED. Uh, it's where you get um, dynamic rear tail lights, you know, the ones that kind of blink across and those kind of things that always look pretty cool. Uh, play and pause pedals uh, in stainless and things. I I'm a big fan of funky headlights, so um, that would definitely be a must for me. Uh, as I said earlier, the um, Oh dear, that's not good, is it? Right, will it go back? Oh no, come on. Uh, now, will it let me go to options again? Sorry about this. Right, here we go. Uh, so, recommendations, so design package, yes, that's ticked it. Um, it doesn't come with sat nav. Um, so it comes with sat nav prep, so you get the screen, but it doesn't have sat nav. 
uh, believe it or not. So you need to choose a particular sat nav. Uh, I'll leave that for now because later on uh, there's uh, some further options for different screen sizes and things, so I'll come back to that. So this is interior style plus, um, so you can, this is where you can have the white steering wheel, it's where you can have different funky coloured lights inside and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, this really frustrates me because look at this, seat heating for both seats. You don't even get seat heating um, without buying an option. So I, I think as much as it pains me, I think that's probably an option that people will end up buying because um, you're going to need, you, you can't not, you know, I think it's probably because I'm using the translation function. Um, it's because you just need heated seats. I can't see how you would have a car like this uh, and have basic things like that not as part of the, uh, the specification that you're putting together. Right, okay. Let's go back. Uh, so let's just run through these other bits and pieces then. Um, so that's got that selected. So in, um, in Germany, uh, you actually get a uh, environmental discount if you buy one of these. So obviously that for them would mean 3,000, nearly 3,000 euros off. Uh, clearly this vehicle in the UK wouldn't qualify for that because it's 32,000 pounds is the limit for having any kind of EV grant. So we wouldn't get that. Uh, and then you get into exterior equipment stuff. So we've got design packages. Uh, we've got, if you don't want uh, tinted rear windows you can take those off and you can just have normal thermal glass I think tints look pretty cool so I'd leave those on um, then you've got uh, the interior style stuff which we've talked about uh, there's obviously a premium one in there as well um, I, I'm not quite sure what premium gives you over and above um, everything else so uh, things like armrest with imitation leather um, Art Velours interior, um, so uh, various other bits and pieces. It, it's only, it's only, I say it's only, it's only a couple of hundred euros more than the normal interior style package. Uh, if you want uh, textile floor mats, then obviously you can add those in. Uh, the um, driving assistance stuff, so you don't get adaptive cruise or any of that sort of stuff. So if I just show you what's in these packages, so. Um, so automatic distance control, that's adaptive cruise. Uh, if you want that, you're gonna to have to pay for it. Uh, things like rear view camera, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, and that also comes with keyless entry. Um, if you want the plus package, what that gives you is a little bit more. So it gives you things like side assist. It also gives you uh, a, a 360 camera. Uh, and it also gives you uh, the uh, um, uh, memory function for park assist. So if you've parked it somewhere, driven out, um, you can get it to reverse back where it came from because it will, will have remembered it, uh, that kind of thing. So let's um, let's add that package on um, because again, you kind of get used to having these things and um, yeah, there we go, error again. Um, uh, yeah, you get used to having these things like uh, adaptive crews and um, I don't particularly use park assist, but uh, things like a reversing camera and things do just start to become second nature in a, in a premium car, so. Okay, uh, infotainment then. So this is where you select which sat nav you want. Uh, so the normal infotainment package, uh, so nine speaker system, Discovery Pro um, nav. Um, the plus package here though is the bigger screen. Um, so that's where you've got a 12 inch display rather than I think it's nine inch in the standard one. Um, so let's just add that on as well. Um, this is a lot easier if you do it without the translation on, I promise you. If you speak German, you'll be whizzing through this site in no time. Right, let's go back then. Uh, so where did we get to? That was infotainment. Comfort, so uh, if you want a tow bar with electric release, again, we showed that on the, uh, the video when we first saw it. Uh, 900 euros, uh, we would want that because we've got a bike rack, um, so it would work really well for us. Oh, this is a pain. Um, let's just go back. Uh, and then uh, the other bits that we've got in here. So if you want a 240 volt socket in the seat frame, um, obviously when they say passenger, they're talking about our driver side, and that's basically the same as the one in the Cali. So if you've got an inverter in the bottom of the seat frame, similar to that. Um, so uh, so that's that. 
it, in fact I don't know whether oh it's gonna it's gonna do that um, I didn't know whether it's gonna give us some more information on the um, uh, the power output from it but it doesn't uh, right let's just go back um, so other bits and pieces in here so things like comfort package um, uh, and uh, the open and closing package. So open and closing package. Uh, so this is electric tailgate, electric side doors, um, you know, ba basically making life super easy. Um, I think you can do some of those things from the key as well. So uh, again, if, you've, if you're used to having luxury vehicles with, oops, uh, used to doing luxury vehicles with those kind of things on, then you'd probably want that too. Uh, right, let's just go back. We get in there now. Um, so that's all of that lot. Um, Comfort Package Plus. Um, this is where you get that funky center console box, uh, which moves around extra USB-C sockets, um, heated front windscreen. Uh, it's a multi-flex board in the boot as well. And I, I will add that because if you look at that picture at the moment, there's no kind of load board or anything like that. Um, if I add this, you'll see that it adds a multi-flex board at the bottom. I'll, I'll go back to that, um, which uh, which is quite interesting, actually. I'm not quite sure what they're thinking of in terms of how you'd use that, because if you look there, it, it, it doesn't... Yes, it gives you kind of a load floor, but I'm not sure if they're expecting the seats to be able to fold flat forward and then that would give you a flat load floor, which I'm assuming they would. And I don't know whether, for example, that would give you a pseudo camper because you might be able to get, you know, one of those Outdoor Revolution mattresses out in there or something like that. You might be able to do something like that uh, without seeing one in the flesh. You just don't know. Uh, so that's that. Um, wheels and tyres. Uh, obviously, in uh, Germany, it's a legal requirement in winter for you to have winter tires. So they sell them with the car if you want them as a, an extra set. So that's what that would be. Um, and then with these, it's just uh, options for all weather tires on each of those. Um, two keys supplied as standard. Um, and then things like uh, whether you want a different charging cable and all of those kind of things. It does come with one um, type two charging cable. Um, so obviously you can um, charge the thing. Uh, and then finally, um, extra warranty if you want. So if you want a um, up to a three year warranty, 100,000 kilometers, um, that's another 1,600 euros. So um, with what we've just selected, which, okay, pretty much an ultimate spec of what you'd do. There is a few more thousand euros you could add into it if you wanted to. Um, we are at 80,000 euros. So 80,800 euros. And yeah, I think it looks cool. You know, you, you can't you can't deny that looks like a cool bus. I'd quite happily rock round in one of those. Um, I have no idea how I'd be able to afford it. Um, Sarah and I, when we were out last night, we were just we, we'd had a bit of a play with this, and we were just saying, I just don't know how we'd do it. I just don't know how we would uh, be able to justify spending that much on this. Um, and I suspect Volkswagen are just going down the line of, you know, looking at how much an average premium family vehicle would cost. So if somebody's had an Audi Q5 maybe, or they've had a Discovery, or they've had something like that, or they're looking at a new um, a new Defender or you know something around that, that kind of price. They've looked at those, they've thought, how much do they, average, how much do they spend on fuel on a uh, monthly basis? okay, well, they're not going to be spending that on fuel because they're going to be paying it out on electric instead and that's a lot cheaper to run. Therefore, we'll whack that on the price um, to uh, get uh, get additional profits in. And that's what it feels like. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I, it just feels like electric cars generally have that extra premium on top. I'm not convinced it's all to do with R&D. I think there's a level of market pricing going on on the basis that they think people can afford it because they'll be saving on the fuel. I'm just not convinced people are going to want to take on this kind of um, financial commitment. And it's great if you can afford one outright. Um, I still question whether there's value in 80,000 euros. Bearing in mind this is a passenger vehicle, um, it, it's not a camper, um, it's cool and funky and it will no doubt be quite exclusive. And when you see one go past, it will make you smile. 
is that worth that kind of money? Let us know in the comments below what you think. Uh, we've liked, uh, <clears throat> we've really enjoyed going, just running through all this configurator and everything with you. Can't wait to see what the, uh, what the English one's like. Be interesting to see what the price is like on the English one. So uh, let us know in the comments below what you think, uh, what kind of colors would you go for, what would your ultimate spec be, uh, and uh, yeah, um, hopefully it's been helpful. Uh, look forward to our, uh, our future videos coming along. If you like this kind of content, you know what to do, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for some more California time.